what's up guys welcome back to the channel uh, i've been looking at uh buying one of these scissor lifts for a while i've had a few failed attempts at buying some this one finally this is about exactly what i wanted uh a buddy of mine's neighbor had it this is a work or whatever it doesn't run um he says it needs a circuit board Control panel or something like that, so we'll see. But yeah, it's a Genie GS 3268RT. I guess it's a it goes with 32 foot, weighs about 8,000 pounds, I believe. Four by four. I got a hell of a deal on it, I feel like. Got brand new tires in the back, fronts aren't bad. It's got a a uh, little three-cylinder Kubota. It'll run on gasoline or propane, which is cool. Uh, that's the only other thing I kind of would like better is a diesel, but this is pretty much perfect for what I need. I'll probably run it off the propane if I can get it going. So, yeah, the motor doesn't look too bad. Um, so the tires are pretty good. He had it. He said he had it running back in 2019. Was the last time it ran, but he didn't want to spend the money on the the circuit board. So but now he says it doesn't have spark. Doesn't have spark. So I'm not sure what year it is. Let's see. So 2006. So yeah, it's not a bad looking machine. It's got. 2400 hours so I think he said he thinks some this board or something is bad possibly I don't know what we'll to do some checking yeah i mean i feel like i got a hell of a deal and i basically paid him scrap price on it i gave him like 700 bucks for it i don't think you can beat that it's honestly a pretty clean machine if it wouldn't have sat outside for five years it wouldn't be having the servicers but that ain't that ain't nothing so hopefully we can get it running i don't know much about this propane stuff, I'll have to do a little bit of research on that because I'd rather run it on propane so the carburetor doesn't get all gummed up with shitty ethanol fuel. But, so yeah. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is try to get this battery out. Um, it looks like this thing kind of has a little release here and this whole solenoid block folds over or something, so I don't know. Let's see if we can get it, get it out. It's always good to see the nest in there. So the guy I got it from, he had some jumper wires and stuff ran, which is a little, I don't know, I don't like that. We'll see if we can figure it out. battery from 2018 so he said it was it's been sitting since 2019 so that makes sense all right let me get this battery out and i got another one we'll throw in there
What you smelling there, boy? Got some mice, some rodents in there. Hmm? Look at that. Bite marks. Something's been chewing on stuff, so that's that's a great sign. Just what you want to see. Um so yeah, I'm not gonna hook up this all these jumper wires this guy had. I mean, I don't know what what any of it's going to. We're just gonna start over on our own and try to diagnose it. Like he, like I said, he said it was running. It ran when he bought it from auction, and then um, the last time he tried to run it. He didn't have any sparks, so I don't know. So the next thing to do would be to turn the key on. I need to hook up the upper panel first. Some of y'all might have noticed that I forgot to put that other ground wire on. I noticed that before I did anything. So I got that on there. And then so the video I watched, you're supposed to pull this e-stop out. And then you have to have this other e-stop out for the upper structure. And then, ooh, so we're gonna turn this key on and see if anything powers on. Nothing. All right. Let me check some stuff. Let me check these e-stops and make sure they're working. All right, so when I bought this thing, the guy I bought it from said that he bought it at an auction and he thought that um, the workers of the place that was selling it sabotaged it and, and messed up a bunch of wiring on purpose. I don't know why, or I don't know why he thought that, but um, he said that he rewired, he fixed a bunch of wiring. So I don't know who did what or whatever. I mean, it had a bunch of jumper wires. Like he said he, the machine ran when he got it, but there was literally a, <laughs> he had a jumper harness going to every, every single, you know, solenoid or ignition or whatever. Like this is what, this is what I'm dealing with right here. Like, and so, you know, I'm, I gotta figure out what, where everything goes on this motor. But besides that, I started going through all this wiring and every relay is, was wired wrong. Like, I mean, don't, judging, going by this schematic, there's like six different schematics for this machine. Some with diesel, some with the Perkins, a Kubota diesel, Kubota gas. This that's what this has, and then there's a um, ANSI model. I guess that's the U.S. model, and then there's like a, another one. I don't remember. But so I don't know if he was going by the wrong wiring schematic because the the uh, the U.K. one or whatever it is is different than this. I don't know. Somebody wired it wrong. I think. So I had to redo all this. I went through every single one of these. These are like for outriggers, which it doesn't have. So I just have them unhooked right now because they go to nothing. And then, so I've been, re I turned the key on. I still got nothing. I even took this, the ECM apart. Nothing looks burnt in there or anything, um, which kind of sucks because I broke the bolts off in the case, but I'll figure that out. Anyway, I'm not getting, I'm still not getting power to this e-stop. Uh, the second e-stop, yeah. I don't know, it's weird. You have to have both e-stops off or open or 
whatever on for the ignition to work. So anyway, this goes to the upper platform. So the black wire should be power. And so I checked it at the e-stop up here, which is, should be right here. I got no power. So I'm like, okay, what's, what's the deal? I check it here and here. I got power. So I unpin this, everything looks okay. Look on this other side where the black wire is supposed to be and it's missing. Um, it's hard to tell because my camera's kind of messed up, but yeah, the pin is completely gone. It's broke off, I guess from being disconnected so many times or something, I don't know. But so I've got some connectors from an excavator that had gotten a new wiring harness. I had cut all these Deutsch connectors off. So I'm gonna see if I have one that'll work. And then I'm gonna replace that and then go from there. So, but yeah, this is, I've been, I've spent probably like, I don't know, 10 hours looking through this wiring and redoing it all. I think I understand it a lot more. The wiring diagram is kind of crappy because it doesn't tell you which wires, what color the wires are and stuff. So I went through and labeled them both connectors going to the ECM myself. So that makes it a lot easier. So I should really know, I should know the wiring really well on this one by the time I get done. But anyway, I'm gonna fix that and then go from there. Hopefully this ECM is still good and the people before me diagnosed it wrong. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna repair this connector. This one with a broken pin. Well, I'm not gonna repair it, I'm just gonna replace it. I bought this kit off Amazon for Deutsch connectors. I'm gonna use a six pin one and uh, just put new ends on it. All right, so it's a couple days later and I got, at first, I just, just to check, I ran a jumper wire from here for the, that, that black power wire to the circuit or to the e-stop. And so then I was able to get power and everything. And then I finally did get the, uh, the display to work over here. Cause I couldn't get this, nothing to come up. I finally got that to work. And it gave me a code for the platform. There's a zero two code platform malfunction or something like that. And then, so I, uh, I ended up putting a new connector here. I did a bunch of testing and stuff and I still could, I still kept getting the code. So I ended up replacing this harness which is only like 50 bucks. It's like an aftermarket one. Um, it's a common issue with these and that still didn't fix it. And then I ended up replacing this circuit board. Um, and that seems to have fixed my issue. So now, which is the circuit board was like 500 bucks for an aftermarket one. Um, I think the factory ones are like a thousand or fifteen hundred. But let's check this out. So now we're in business. So that's pretty sweet. And so here we go. I can crank it over. That's pretty cool. And I ended up I had broken these bolts off in this housing. So I drilled them out. Tap some new threads, use some different screws and whatnot. Um, I replaced the uh, the switches on the e stop because they were giving me some faulty readings. Um, there are those. That was pretty easy. And then I'm gonna replace the ignition switch too because it just I don't know. It doesn't feel feels like crap when you're it still works, but, and then there's a breaker that goes here, 
I was getting a bad connection there, so I've got to bypass with the fuse, but I do have a new breaker for it now that I'm gonna replace. But yeah, it'll crank over from there or the upper platform. So now I just need to, hopefully this joystick and other stuff is good, I don't know, we'll find out. But I need to put the cover back on here. And if you're ever trying to diagnose this harness on this side that goes down the whole scissor part or whatever you can bypass that whole harness that i found on a forum by unhooking it right here and that would have told me that there was a problem with the well no it still wouldn't have told me because the the male side was bad on that that broken pin or whatever but yeah if you're ever trying to diagnose this harness going up the scissor part you can bypass it right here so that's helpful but now the next issue i have is um trying to get this motor running and the carb is full of old gas it's like really nasty in there oh, you can see the i don't know if you can tell but got like old varnish in it and I, the guy that I bought it from said the last time he tried to get it running, he didn't have any spark. So I need to check that. He had put a different cool on it. I took all of his stupid jumper wires and stuff on, hooked everything back up like I think it goes. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe the wiring's kind of rough. But I got new spark plugs, oil filter, air filter. I don't know, I wanna to try to get it running first and then I'll service it. And then hopefully there's no other issues with the rest of the machine, but we'll find out, I guess. So that's just an update. So I got um, I got power and ground going to my coil when I'm cranking. I ain't got, I've got no spark. Um, so I'm gonna take this, this guy had put, he couldn't get spark on it the last time he messed with it. So we put another cool on here. I think this is possibly some cheap China one. I don't know. But he gave me the original one, which is a Dento. It's probably better than that one that's on there. I tested this one with the, my meter and the cool, the windings test to be good. So I think I'm gonna put this back on there and start over with that. And then if I still don't have spark, I'll pull the cap off, the distributor cap, and see if it's the points. I mean, I don't know if this has points or what, I guess. I'm not too familiar with points and stuff. I've watched people mess with them, but I guess we'll check that out and see what the cap and rotor look like and go from there. All right, I'll pull the spark plugs out. I got a new distributor ordered because it's all corroded and stuff in there. But uh, when I pulled the plugs out, the number two one looked wet. So I'm gonna turn it over and see if any water comes out. That's good. I was trying to clean the uh, cap because there was a lot of corrosion in there to see if that would give me spark, but then I ended up damaging the little carbon piece that goes against the middle of the rotor. I broke it. And then there's, looks like there's a lot of corrosion inside that distributor too, so I went ahead and just ordered a new one. I just ordered a um, Chinese one off Amazon because the Kubota ones are super expensive. Even the Chinese one was 180 bucks, but they get this on holding the distributor down. It's got this uh, tamper proof bolt. And so it had like a threaded piece in the middle of this bolt. I couldn't tell what kind of bolt it was. I'm sure there's some kind of special tool on how to get it out, but I ended up sticking my a 90 degree drill in there right here and drilling the center threaded deal out. And then I, um, use a step bit 
Well, I, I used a step bit to drill that center piece out. I didn't know what this was. I didn't know, but I think it was an, it's an Allen head or it was once you get that middle piece out. I don't know. Anyways, I used an easy out to get it out. And then, so I don't have it. This is a metric bolt, I think. And I don't have any laying around. So I just um, welded this quarter inch bolt head on the top. So I can tighten it. And then I don't know if this, I tried to mark where this old distributor is so I can get it back in the same spot. And then I also rotated the engine with the plug out, found the number one compression stroke with my finger in the in it. And then I stuck a screwdriver and slowly turned it over on the crank. I believe it's like a seven eighths bolt. I'm not sure, I don't remember. Until it was at top dead center. And so I got my, my uh, rotor marked right here. So see what, uh, so I'm gonna try to stick my distributor in the same way as that. And then my fuel pump was bad. So I got a new Edelbrock O'Reilly Special. This is the low pressure one, two to three and a half PSI. I don't know, hopefully it doesn't like overrun the the uh, bolt or the kneeling seat. And let's see, uh, I've got my carburetor all cleaned up. Um, I mean, this thing was nasty, full of stuff. Um, you wanna make sure that this, I call it like a fuel shut off solenoid. Uh, I don't know what the technical term is for it, but make sure it's got a little like pintle that sticks in the, like a jet here or a seat. And like that's, if it does, if it's stuck, it's usually stuck closed. So your carburetor bowl won't get fuel, I don't think. Um, this one was stuck. And so I worked it back and forth and I tested it, just give it, give it power here and it should suck it in. So whenever it gets power, it sucks in and lets fuel flow to the bowl. And this solenoid here is for the uh, propane, I believe. Same concept, basically. It wasn't stuck, but I went ahead and tested it out to make sure it's good. Probably, I'm probably going to put a new end on it. So, yeah, I got that all nice and cleaned up. And the fuel tank was had a bunch of sludge in the bottom. Um, there's three bolts that hold it on. You gotta get to them from underneath here. And of course, I was afraid of when I started on this thing that these would be seized in there, which I got lucky on these two, but this one, it just was spinning the, the cert, nut cert or whatever in there. And I was hoping it wouldn't cause a leak, but it doesn't look like it did, but I had to cut that off with a cutoff wheel. I mean, two is better than none, so. And I tried new, I tried fresh gas, pressure washer, degreaser, all kinds of stuff to clean that var varnish out of here and nothing would like break it down. And then I ended up using acetone and that stuff, I mean, it, it just dissolved it right away. So that's the, definitely the way to go. I'm, I'm gonna put a new, uh, I got some new fuel line from O'Reilly's. Stick that back in, fix some, I fixed a little rust down here. Well, I don't know, I cleaned it up a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna throw the distributor in, throw the car back on. I need to finish bolting down the coil. I got new plugs, gap to like 40 thousandths. I think they call for, I don't know, 39 or 43, so. Um, that's about it. Put all that stuff on and see if we got support, hopefully. A little change of plans on the distributor bolt. When I went to go tighten it down, my <laughs> nut just broke off. So I didn't get good penetration. So I just took my bandsaw and made it a flathead. And so I've got this little right angle impact deal. I might hit it. A little bit to make sure it's tight 
And yeah, hopefully I don't have to take it back out. All right, so it tightened down good. I've got my marks lined up. Uh, this is a number one. It's got a number one on it. You can see right there. And so my rotor should line up with my rotor, which it does. So hopefully I don't have to play with the timing because I'm not sure what it's supposed to be set at. It doesn't tell you in the manual. And the only manual I found for this motor, they want you to buy it. So I don't know. Hopefully it's close with this being an aftermarket Chinese distributor. We'll see. All right, got my distributor in. Coals hooked up. Uh, that's I got an old spark plug. Let's see if it's got spark now. Oh yeah, we got spark. So, just for testing purposes, I think I'm gonna try and put a little. Um, ether in it before I put the carb on and see if it'll pop off. Sounds like I got the timings off a little bit, backfiring through the carburetor, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the carb on and see if I can get it running like that and go from there. I may have to adjust the, the timing or something. I don't know. Sounds a little goofy, but it has been hasn't ran since 2019, from what I'm told. So who knows? And the starter gives me a fit every now and then. starting food in there. Let's just throw the carb on. Alright, I ain't tried it yet. Let's give it a try. So this would be choke, I think. I don't have the choke hooked up yet, but no way. That's awesome. That was legit the first try. All right, we gotta wait for a green light here.
is when I when it dies, I got this red light. And it won't go away until I shut it off and dry again. I don't know if that's supposed to be how it works or what. Earlier when I would crank on it, it would go back to green after a while. But I don't know. the high idle on that deal <laughs> the dog did not like that tank what you think about that too loud i wish it had a tachometer on it that'd be cool i could see what the hell it's doing hmm not even touching it right now. Start without any me helping. 
Come on. I don't understand why it won't let you restart again once it... So I was trying to go up and down and move with this thing, but it won't, won't do anything. So that'll be our next issue. I want to see if it'll let me do it from the other control panel, maybe. I don't know. It seems to run decent. I wish I knew what temperature it was at. Make sure it's not overheating or something. Let's try it from this platform. Come on, baby. Put the air filter housing on it, see if that helps any. Come on. It wants to.
Well, that was cool. Got that to work. Now we just need to get it to work over here. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing, which that's for sure. Mm. Oh, come on. That ride ready. Let's see. Maybe because I wasn't pressing this. I have to get this thing to start better because I can't be up in the air and. I just gotta figure out why it won't move. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. At least it goes up and down. Yeah, uh, this joystick might be bad. I mean, this thing has been open to the elements for a while. But I hate to just buy a new joystick. I'm gonna have to do some more checking. I got it figured out now, so I got it. I switched it over from gas to propane. Uh, on gas, it's kind of finicky the way it runs. Like I can't get the. I had the carburetor set where I wanted it, and then it'll rev up. And then when I let off, when it comes back down, it's idle. RPMs. It doesn't want to idle low like it's supposed to, like fifteen hundred. It like I have to turn the idle up to like 1800 when it's on gasoline. So I don't know what the deal is there. I'm, I'm wondering if this thing was like primarily driven with this propane. I mean, it should run on both, but. So then I tried the propane and it started and idled good. And then whenever you hit the high idle, it kind of choke out for a while. And then, then all of a sudden it just started running like perfectly on the propane. So I don't know, I still got some playing to do, figure some stuff out, but and I figured out why I wasn't moving is because I wasn't hitting this uh, safety switch or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, now it works great. It's like, uh, trip for the starter. I think I'm gonna have to buy a new starter, or clean the contacts in that one or something. When it gets hot, you act stupid. Come on. Alright. Of course, when I stop recording, it finally starts perfectly. So, here we go. See, that's what it does when it first. And all of a sudden it'll start running perfectly. I don't get it.
pretty good. I still got, oops, still got some uh, bugs to work out, but I'm pretty happy with it. I got like um, about 1,600, including the price of it all together. So I mean, you can't beat that. That's awesome. All right, thanks for watching.